Hello everyone, Robert Saunders here again, and today we're going to look at a Red Hat OpenShift deployment using a curated blueprint from Dell as we go from bare metal power edge all the way through to an OpenShift cluster deployment in about three hours just by executing a blueprint and adding a few parameters. So let's get started. Here I am at the initial Dell Automation Platform Portal. Remember, this portal and orchestrator can be either in our SaaS offer or it can also be on-premises inside your own data center. It is your choice 100%. For this demo, I have a uh, portal and orchestrator in our lab here running in our uh, TME environment. So this is where I'm going to be demoing from. So I have three compute nodes here out of about seven that are in a ready for provisioning state. So those three I am going to add to my new Red Hat OpenShift cluster. Now again, the portal does define the assets, the catalog, the identity, and it also provides me connectivity to the orchestrator. I have some other videos that go in depth more about what the portal and orchestrator can do, especially how you configure uh, all the different choices in the portal itself. But the orchestrator is where we're going to be doing our work today. So I'm going to click over to the orchestrator. The orchestrator is what executes all of the jobs, the blueprints, the workloads, and makes this cluster that we're going to be doing. So again, I see the same three by filtering on the top right up there, the same three compute nodes, power edges that are in the free pool. I'm going to use them to make my Red Hat cluster. So over to Blueprints, and I see I have a few different Blueprints here. I have some VMware ones. You've seen me use those in previous videos. And then I have the OpenShift ones. And again, also worth noting the Offer and the Utility Blueprints tabs up there. We've kind of separated out the main blueprints and the sub blueprints. It makes it a lot cleaner up here in the offer level. So I will check the box for the OpenShift cluster deployment and click deploy. This will open up the parameter screen where I need to populate all the blueprint parameters that are needed. I can pre-populate this with the JSON, which is what I always do. I'll show you that here in one second. So I'll browse out to that JSON and I'll simply click on it and pull it in. I've pre-configured it. I'll show you the JSON and what that looks like here in just a second. But the cool thing is, once I pull it in here, I also can make edits in this GUI in real time. I can also do that. So I'm also going to upload one of the license files that I have for this uh, ecosystem. There's the license, and then I see all the different uh, control plane and worker nodes from a Red Hat perspective. Worth noting, this is very similar to what I did with VMware for vSphere, but now we're actually creating an OpenShift de deployment. A few different asks on the configurations, not much. We still have the network, config, the usual suspects there. But the cool thing about all of this, and we also hook up to the power store, the CSI, CSM, all the storage is all taken care of for us with this blueprint. Again, here's the blueprint. You see at the top are the sub-level blueprints. We can chain them together, which we do. This is the curated blueprint from Dell. All the networking that we've configured, scroll down through it, and then the power store towards the end. And there's also a registry that I have. I use Nexus for that. You can use whatever you'd like, but I have an, uh, also a registry inside our environment where we land the bits for our plugins for the Dell Private Cloud. So one last click here to confirm, and let's go off and do some work. So we'll click Deploy, and now this will go off and take those three nodes, and it's going to first baseline them with BIOS and firmware. There's a lot more steps here on this one. This, this entire deployment here takes about three hours instead of the VMware takes about one and a half. That's perfectly fine. Again, all the work that's being scripted and done for us out of the gate is enormous, about 28 steps here, or 29 steps actually, some in parallel, some are serial. So that's the entire execution graph there zoomed out and I'll zoom back in. And I'm also gonna fast forward through a lot of these steps here. We see some initial validation, then I throw up the iDrac, uh, iDrac screens here so we can watch some of that. I'm gonna fast forward through some of it here to get to the good stuff. So now we see Rail getting installed here. The initial, we have to lay down uh, the Red Hat OS first, which we do. There it goes. So once the Rail OS is done, 
Now we're going to start the clustering. We're going to start clustering these three nodes together. And there's a lot of work to get that done. Again, all scripted. So I just sit here and watch it work. Beautiful thing to do here. There's going to be multiple reboots. And now I can go to the OpenShift cluster because I know my cluster is starting to form. So I can log in and I can even monitor some progress over here if I would like just because I'm nerdy and I want to see the details. So I can see the monitoring going on here right now. I'll let that kind of run in the background. You don't have to go over here to this OpenShift. I just like to watch it just because I think it's fun to see of all the work being done behind the scenes. The storage component, that is going to throw some logging over to the OpenShift cluster uh, monitoring the events over there. So let's jump back over there. There's some of the operators. There's the Dell container storage module. Again, all installed for us as part of the blueprint. Nothing to do here. That was always a pain point for customers. There's a lot of steps to do this manually. We've automated all of it here end to end from PowerEdge with PowerStore in the back end, pulling it all together as part of this blueprint. Continuing to monitor some of the vents here, if I like, jump over to the power store, and I'll see a fourth CSI node probably land there in just a couple seconds. So there's the CSM namespace. The Dell Private Cloud plugin, I'll show you that here in a second, and that's going to be very similar to the other ecosystem that you've seen the previous videos for vSphere. The plugin looks exactly the same from a consistency perspective. That's really cool. So now we see all the volumes here that have been deployed, about 23 of them, all the CSI volumes, and they map up to what I would see from a, a, a persistent volumes and persistent volume claims inside OCP. So this real-time logging down here at the bottom can also be, you can click on any of the circles there and drill right to the log. It'll open up to what you want to look at if you want to monitor, or you can download the entire package of logs at any given time. You can download them multiple times if you'd like. So now we see the entire blueprint is complete. For my demo, I fast forwarded a bunch, but let's go take a look at the Dell Private Cloud here, the plugin that was, or the extension that was installed as part of this blueprint. And you're going to see a lot of similarities if you've seen the one from VMware. We have the inventory. There's our three nodes there, all named. They're all healthy. They're all up and ready for work. Then I'll just kind of skip through the tabs up on the top there. But first, we have the physical view, both front and rear. And then we have some more uh, boot devices and alerts over on the right there. You can click on any of these components. More videos coming in deeper dive on all of the plug-in here from some of my TME peers at a later date. There's the boots and alerts, no alerts. That's a good thing. And then over to the updates tab, more videos coming on this LCM and extension updating there. Security. And then settings. Again, the same tabs that we saw in all the other ecosystems also exist here. So it's super easy to go between ecosystems. Think about that. Now I can move around between all of these different deployments or models, VMware, Red Hat, Nutanix, more to come all with the same kind of overall look and feel. We also have the topology view. That's kind of a top-down, north-south, so we can see all the different de dependencies on all the different steps. We had some customers ask for this, so we added that in. And then let's go back out here to the infrastructure view and expand that Red Hat cluster. There's the one we just made with the blueprint calling the workflow. Now, the cool thing about this here is I see that Red Hat cluster, that's great, but I also see the VMware cluster right below it. So I have multiple ecosystems living together in the same orchestrator. It's really, really cool to do. And you can even deploy them in parallel if you like. So more to come on those demos. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I really appreciate it.